when you're asleep. They're just getting started. John Moore, Dave Palumbo, After Hours. Welcome back to another episode of After Hours. I'm Dave Palumbo and I'm joined as always by my two partners in crime, John Romano and Greg Valentino. What's going on, guys? Greg, Greg is still with us. Yeah. <laughs> He hasn't... I start laughing because I see John. I, I'm thinking of what he's thinking, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we, we we do this to each other the, during the because we have to be quiet for that five seconds before we start. Yeah, we, we, which we is very difficult it. for you two guys to be quiet. Even people long. don't realize we've had whole conversations. We've solved the world's problems before the show even started. Yeah, half the time you guys out there watching this don't realize. Dave tells us, "Okay, that's enough. We're gonna get, because you know we should be saving this for the show." That's you right. know what I mean? I, I I always say that the be our best shows have been lost in the in the pre-show. Yes, you know, yeah, that's yes. always the case. I know. You know so. the funny thing. The funny thing is that um, uh, Greg and you and me, you know, we do this show, right? And and who are we forgetting? We're forgetting Jimmy the Bull, right? But I text Jimmy every week, and I talk to him, right. and he calls me up usually during the week and says, "Are you mad at me? Are you mad at me?" I'm like, "No, of course I'm not mad at you." <laughs> okay, uh, I'm, I'm going to be on the show this week, right? I said, "Yeah, you're going to be on the show this week." So I text him yesterday the time for the show. I've been trying to call him, Skype him, right, since we start the show. We start the show late. He's nowhere to be found. As soon as we right. end the show, I'm going to get a text message from him. How did no one call me? You doing the show today? Jimmy, we've been calling <laughs> you all the morning. Where, where are you? You did the show without me? Oh, you must be mad at me. He's like a, like a, like, you know, like an old lady. No, I don't he's, know what happened. He's, he's mad at me. He's mad at me now because he called me 700 times during the show last week and I couldn't answer the call because if I answered the call, I lost you guys and I keep texting him, stop calling right. me and call the show. And, uh, and, and he called it 399 more times he called, you know? He's so, like your, so he's he's like your father. He's mad, at me for, he's mad at me for not answering the phone. He's like I used my to dad, send him yeah. fucked up videos, and he would get pissed off. <laughs> Jesus Christ, don't send me shit like that. <laughs> well, you know what? I think we, we have to, this crowd right here we have, I mean, our group of people, we must absolutely talk about the death of the barbarian brother David Paul. Oh, yes. I mean, we all yes. knew him very, very well in our own ways, which is interesting, which I want to hear everyone's perspective on it. But it was a shock to me because David was in really good shape. I mean, he was, as far as I knew, physically he was great. He was on an all greens diet. He was so obsessed about his health. He looked healthy. Um, you know, it, it, it really was a surprise. And I had, still have not gotten a reason why he died or what the cause of death might have been. He just didn't wake up, which is a great way to die, by the way. I, that's how I'd like to die. One day, just me not too. wake up. Well, What's your let me take ask you a question. John? What's that? What's your take on this whole thing? <clears throat> what do you think happened? I, 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 I was wondering if maybe it might be an aneurysm or something that got him. I, I, I don't know, but no, I, I mean, I, I was talking to him two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, and you know, he, he, sixty-two years old. He looked incredible. I mean, really, really good. And yeah. I know that they, you know, they made they made this transition from being huge, you know, bodybuilders and the lifestyle long, long time ago. These guys have been, they've been you know, lean and small now for like 20 years. So, yeah. so yeah. you can't blame, you know, his demise on, you know, a bodybuilding or bodybuilder lifestyle. No way. He was so far removed from that. If you want to blame it on anything, you can blame it on veganism and yoga, but, but <laughs> that, that's just, you know, not the case. So bodybuilding has zero to do with this. And I'm as surprised and shocked as anybody. Yeah. It, it was just like here one minute, gone the next. No, it just didn't wake up. I mean, what the hell? So yeah. I mean, I don't know. Did he have? Did he have any kind of like sleep apnea that that we didn't no, know about? No, he like, was it, perfect. He probably has never gone to a doctor in probably 20 years either. But right, was so. he partying? You think or no? Or what? Not at all. Not at all. No, absolutely not. No. I didn't think so, but he I knew he was the, wacky, though. He wasn't the same guy that I, you know. No, Peter, you know, I knew. Peter which I'm try, I was trying to get Peter to actually call into the show, his twin brother. But he, Peter, if anything, you know, people would cons consider maybe a little a little crazy. I think he's... Oh, like, wait. Whoa, a little crazy? <laughs> We're talking about a guy who talks in rhyme. Did you, John, did you see the picture I put up on my Instagram and my Facebook? I, I found the picture of them holding the plastic bags. With the plastic bag? I just, yeah. I just sent that to a friend of mine who, who, who didn't believe Maybe me. Maybe Tyler can pull that <laughs> off my Instagram. It's the, 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 the most recent picture. 
Yep. Peter's yeah, I, Peter's had some recent videos too that he was a little wacky in. You know what I mean? He, well, he comes out with stuff. Peter's the night in light. You know he. Yeah, he remember is. remember he did that whole thing with with Colette. And he was like dancing in front yeah. of her and, and he you healed know, her. And, he healed her and doing all this. And then he wanted money. He, yeah, he, he healed her in the Luxor Hotel, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He wanted us to pay him, and then you know when we like. Balked at paying him. Then he went on this whole d dancing, rhyming thing about you I've know seen like, it. how we should get paid. It's not money, and it's other stuff, and the universe, and and uh, but it all and it all rhymed, which yeah. was really fantastic. But you know, something snapped it. in their heads, though, John. I mean, I knew he bolted him really well. I've been to their house, yeah. You know, in when they lived in, you know. Right up, right past Santa Monica, the next town over. In, in Topanga, I was there. Yeah. I was at their fuck. I used to drive them home. They'd lock their keys in the car from the gym, <laughs> and they were crazy. <laughs> they're they're two different guys today. Uh, then, well, you know, I mean, I don't know. David David was far less crazy than than. Well, I, I would. I, I'm not going to say crazy. Far less unique than Peter. They're not crazy. But, they're, but they're David unique. had You're right. David, David was a legit, legit artist. He was an amazing yes. photographer, amazing photographer, F builder, furniture maker, leather maker. You know, cr cr there was he, he, he had a style and was able to express it in all of the things that he created. And he, he absolutely was the consummate artist. And artists are a little out there, you know, yeah. but I, I, as I, I know a lot of artists and they all fit into that category. He, I wouldn't put David any further out there than any of the other guys yeah. I know. He said that um, once that he got uh, his mother took him to New York City to be tested because you know he was they couldn't figure out why he couldn't read in school, and they said that in all the cases in New York he was like the worst case of dyslexia they'd ever seen or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it, it's amazing that he was as talented as he was given all the handicaps he had in terms of learning. You know, deficits at school. Most most artists are dyslexic. Are I'm really? dyslexic. This Leonardo da Vinci. Me too. Was slow. Leonardo da Vinci was so dyslexic. He used to write everything like backwards in the mirror. You know, <laughs> both, both seriously. Of my parents were artists for a living. That's what they. That's how my my father built this house and everything. Oh, really? He was my father was a very famous artist. That's what he did for a living. I didn't know that. I'm not talking about no painting. He was an illustrator. A, he was a cartoonist first, an illustrator, and then he then he became into like advertising, like graphic arts and all mm -hmm. that shit. Oh, wow. But that's what my father did. We got I can't show I'll show you one day. We got a mosaic that's 8 feet tall here, a Spanish dancer. Wow. Uh, my father uh, did it with tiles and everything like that. My mother was an artist. That's how they fed the house. I'm actually a really good artist in in a in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? I didn't and know a that bullshit about you. artist. And a bullshit, a good bullshit artist. Well, Greg, no, but, you um, know, Greg uh, David Paul <laughs> once said in an interview that he he considered himself an artist in a muscle suit. So he, <laughs> he, he never really considered well, himself a, a bodybuilder. He figured he had but, he figured he put a muscle suit on just to get attention from people, but he was yeah, really an yeah. artist the whole time. Yeah, David but boy, also, what a muscle suit. I mean, th their muscle oh, suit was the real deal, man. Th yeah. Those guys, they were strong as fuck, those but guys. They had you, but you know what, Johnny? You were there, I was there, dude, I was there every day with those guys. They had Palachia type strength. What I mean by that was they weren't deadlifting and doing a, and a squat wasn't their greatest thing, even though they had the squat rack there, the Barbarian Brothers, that yeah, power rack. Suit. But those fucking guys could curl fucking 250 pound dumbbells and shit. I yep. know, I've seen him do it. And they would carry on in the gym and smack each other in the face. You know what I'm saying? They would do they the were most. No, they, they created such a commotion <laughs> when they trained. It was like the circus came to town when they were training. Absolutely. And, and they and they always had and they had guys like Samir Benut or Mike Christian. Right? They always right. re, drew some famous guy in, you know? And they were just, <laughs> the and funny thing is, a lot. no when, gym in the world when, would have when, put up with them except Golds and and Ed Connors, you know, owning it. You know? Dude, oh, man, I was there with Pete Gronkowski. You have no idea. I throw him out of the gym for like six months because Lyle Alzado let them stay in his house, and they went on. What? Well, oh, vacation. you told us this, and he, and he, he wrecked had the house in his house every night. And he came, <laughs> Lyle Alzado came home, and there was nothing left of the inside of his house. They destroyed it, and they were good friends with Alzado. And Alzado said, "I'm going to come down to the gym, and I'm going to beat the fuck out of both of them." And Grimkowski came out and said, called them both to the front desk. He said, "You and you 
six months out of here. No more. Because you're going to get this fucking place is going to be wrecked. And they were afraid of him, too. <laughs> that, like, that tells you how Zeno. strong Alzado was. Oh, the, oh, dude, Alzado would have killed him. I was, he would have killed him. I trained with Alzado. He was absolutely fucking nuts. Oh, did I used to see him in the gym? Absolutely nuts. You, you think he could have beat both you know of them up, mean? John? What's that? Could Alzado have beaten both of them up? At the same with time. With one hand. Really? At the same time. Yes. With hey, one hand listen. tied behind his back on roller listen. skates. They were big guys. I know, That's when I was in the heyday of knowing them. And they, they were big guys, but they were like really teddy bears, to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. They were teddy bears. They weren't rugged. They weren't out fighting and all that stuff. You know what I mean? They were they were pranksters. They were fun. Right. They would be like, hey, let's climb that fucking wall and jump into the dump truck while it's driving. Or like, you know, th that's the way they right. were. Right. They were. Fun guys. They were. They they liked to have fun. Both yeah. of them. You know what I mean? They weren't. They weren't tough guys, and they certainly weren't bullies. They would talk to anybody. Right. I told you. I think it was Peter who threw a fart once, and it smelled like bacon. And at the time, I hadn't eaten. And I was over there going, oh, oh man, that's the greatest fart I ever smelled in my life. Because I was like, oh, my God, can you throw some eggs with that? You know, it was, I hadn't eaten in, like, a day or two, you know. It was bad. But uh, Al, Al Zeta was fucking dangerous, though. Oh, he, bro. He, he, he was he was he was the most feared man in the NFL. He was dangerous. He was absolutely lethal. You had to be very careful with him. Yes. Do you know where he reminded me of? Fucking Charlie Arms when Charlie Arms was younger. Yeah. I used to go in the gym with Charlie Arms. I wasn't wait a minute, wait a minute. I was didn't go in the gym with him. I was a young guy and I was like fifteen years old and I was in a white plains Y. And Charlie Arms, I remember doing thirty pound dumbbells. I was curling with him and uh well first I was on the machine. They had off the wall where you pull the cables off the wall like that. <laughs> the, and yeah, I the, old, doing, the old one. Right? Yeah. I was doing these. And Charlie Arms comes over to me and he's got this big long hair like Jesus and his fucking handlebar mustache. He was like a bike. <laughs> and, he, and he had the biggest fucking arms. Now you're fi I'm 15 years old. This is like 1975 <laughs> in a white plane bike. And he comes over to me and he says, hey, come on, get off there. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I need that. Let's go. Get off. <laughs> and I was in the middle of a set and I'm, I let go and I, like, I ran away, you know. Then next thing I know, about 10 minutes later, I'm curling a 30-pound dumbbell sitting on a bench like this, you know, and incline, I'm curling, and fucking Charlie Arms goes, hey, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, I need those dumbbells, get off there, let's go, walking around, get off there, you know? I know I I'm like, laughing because I know Charlie very well. And oh, you I can hear you his do. voice, you can hear him saying it. Yeah. Bro, he was like, he, and he had a, you know, you knew, like, you saw this guy, the fucking big handle, him, and he was so big, his fucking Sca arms he's scary, like and he's a scary, intimidating guy, too. Even oh, dude, he'd kill you. Do you. But you that's know the way how they, they was him, in the gym. They call him Charlie Arms because he started a Harley <laughs> with, his, with, his, with his hand. With his, yeah. He kicks, right? When he, yeah, he would he kick him with his arms. He started a Harley yeah. with, his, with his arm. Dude, that fucking those arms were humongous. You're talking 1975, guys. Bef you know, to the guys out here, don't know. This is before insulin and growth hormone and all that shit. I mean, he juiced the shit out of himself, but he was fucking. His arms were fucking. But he had that look too. That you know, that big fucking handlebar mustache, He's scary. the long black hair. He's got and an he, intense you know, like look fucking on his face. Angel. And yeah. he wouldn't think twice <laughs> about smacking the shit out of anyone. You know that, right? Oh, well, back then he would have fuck. He was no, he would have smacked. He didn't give a shit. Cops would come to the gym. He'd, they'd fucking, you know, they'd have 10 of them because they were afraid of him. Well, I don't you know. know what the, I mean? the big story is, you remember Ricky Rondinelli? Yeah, of course I know Ricky Rondinelli. He, I think he's the only one who ever beat up. Didn't he beat up? He beat up Ricky Rondinelli. He knocked him out, I think, with one punch. Dude, he knocked out everybody. Dude, Tony Cucciello was in the fucking thing doing dips like this, and he would go, ah, ah, and, and, and what's his name? Just walked over to Charlie Arms and went, pap, while he was in the dipping bars. And it, it, <laughs> <laughs> because he didn't like the way he would scream during sex. Bro. <laughs> he was fucking crazy. He was crazy, bro. He was crazy. He would knock out everybody. He would knock out everybody. He, you know. You know what other thing he would do? He would. Um, Rob Messino owned the gym. Denise Messino's oh, ex-husband. Rob Messino's my boy. Yeah, I Rob was great. Messino. Rob owned the gym up at East Coast Fitness up in, in in Westchester. And Charlie would wait until the the delivery truck would come to bring all the drinks. You know, for the gym. And he would have them put half the drinks in his trunk, right? <laughs> and I said, Rob, what, what, you let him do it? He goes, what was I supposed to do? <laughs> he couldn't do anything. Dude, couldn't stop dude, Charlie. Rob, 
Rob Messina is a good friend of mine. He's such yeah. a good guy. He, you know, he's got the, oh, I think, the biggest seashell collection yeah. in the world where they actually, the museums, at, you know, ask yeah, him about that. that. He lives he's, down he's here in Fort Myers, right biologist. next to us. We, we go out to yeah. dinner once in a while. I think you're right, John. He, is a, he was married to Denise Messina. I mean, right. for the people out yeah. there that don't know who we're talking about, because yeah. Denise Messina was, <clears throat> I know her forever. She went to high school with my friends and everything. Uh, she was Denise Sanchez. She, I love her. She's a great girl. Yeah. You know, and then she married... Rob. You know, Rob. Rob was a great... I know Rob, 1974. Well, Rob Dude, lives he was down here really, by me yeah. now. You know, Amanda, no, my wife knows uh, Rob for years. She was oh, yeah. Me. Well, because he was with the, you know, Muscle the muscle Elegance, right. Muscle Pinups. All the girls knew him. I used to send girls to him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Dana Capabianco, all of my... That's my sister. Yeah. You know? Uh, but but getting back to Charlie Arms and then, and getting back to... Uh, 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 Alzado, Alzado reminded me of Charlie Arms. If you caught him in a bad mood, you know what I mean? He'd be the kind of guy that would take, say, dude, I'm going to throw this 30 pound dumbbell across the gym at that fucking guy. If somebody was great, he, he, you had to get away from, you know what I mean? <laughs> when you uh, went to, Al when you Al moved to Venice though, Greg, and you saw, and you see Alzado, you're like, holy mackerel, I thought I got rid of Charlie Arms. I left New York and I got another Charlie <laughs> Arms now on top oh, of Oh, dude, he, they both were bad. They, dude, they, they're brothers from a different mother. <laughs> they had that attitude. See, people don't, but see, some of the people here, they don't know who Charlie Arms is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they might be like, who the fuck is this guy Charlie Arms they're talking about? Well, you can Google him and Most you'll see. Feet. But yeah. I mean, he's, he's, he's in his late 70s there. now, right? Yeah, CharlieArms.com. <laughs> he what? Yeah. He's got his own website. I want to pull up a picture of him so that uh, oh, people can see what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah dude. Charlie, Charlie I, I met Charlie when he was like 59 because he had, he had gotten out of jail and, and he became a good friend of mine. At that point, I helped him. He won. Remember, he won the Masters Nationals over 60, got his pro card, won an over 60 pro show. I mean, it, it, it's unbelievable. The guy was able to yeah, do that yeah. at over 60. And no one looked good at 60 back then. He had still had huge arms. So, oh. He he's, was in he's Penn State. I remember we were walking down the West Side Highway, crossing it after one of the Weinberger shows there at New York <laughs> Pro, and a truck, it was a huge truck, like a garbage truck, like came too close to us. He went and chased the truck. It was screaming at the driver. If you, the, the language that came out of his mouth, and the guy got out of the truck. I said, oh my God, what am I going to do? I mean, Charlie's like 65 years old at this point. Charlie would have killed this guy. The guy was so oh, scared. I'm telling you, Charlie was so intimidated. I was scared just hearing him yell. And he was screaming at this guy. And I'm like, uh, he's like, get your ass back in that fucking truck. And he goes, unless you want to do something about it. The guy got back in the truck and drove away. The guy oh, was yeah. 30 years old, probably. You know, Charlie was 65. Dude, That's how scared I he was. I knew Charlie. He was, I, Charlie had to be maybe in his 20s because I'm fucking yeah. a 60. And he was, wow. you know, you're talking 1974, 75. Yeah. I was a young kid going to the White Plains YMCA. That's where he trained. Let me tell you. And he, you know, he maybe was like, he's 10, maybe 10 or so years older than me. You know, he's got to be, no, he's more than that because he's in his mid seventies now at least. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. Yeah. But he was young when I met him. He was, he, I don't even think he was 30, but I mean, he had that big fucking handlebar. My, I mean, he was a bad, 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 bad You can guy. even find pictures on that website I gave you, Tyler, of him as a young man. I mean, <laughs> you'll see. I mean, I'm scary. I, I, I liked the guy, but I was like scared shit of him when I was young. I was like, <laughs> I would fucking hide because anytime I saw him in the gym after that, I was afraid to fucking use the equipment. You know, like if I saw he was doing chest, if I saw he was doing chest, I'd be like, okay, he's going to use those, but I know he's going to wind up. I'm going to back. <laughs> or something. You know? I didn't want to be anywhere near it because he would take it off the machine now. Yeah. He didn't care if you were in the middle of a set. He was ready to take the dumbbells right out of your fucking hand we and go get the fuck. I need these. Let's go. Come on. You're fucking <laughs> were, you guys, were you guys in the gym during the time period when the Barbarian Brothers were in movies? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what yeah, was that yeah. like? I mean, they, they have all these major movies coming out. I mean, were they like celebrities at that point? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. When, when they did DC Cab, when they did... They went, to, they went to Italy a lot and did a lot of movies over in, in, in Italy. So yeah. they were always gone and coming back. And then when they would come back, they would have all these stories and pictures about what they, what they, they, how they just filmed and how they were involved. And they, they didn't like the way it was written. So they were like rewriting it on the fly. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, and that's why they got kicked out of Hollywood because they were too difficult to work with. <laughs> they, they but wait, let me tell you something, though. They, first of all, not only did they have talent, that's David was a genius with writing movies and shit. But let me tell you something. You ask it if they were celebrities. Gold's Gym was the mecca of bodybuilding, was the fucking greatest place you could ever go back in the day. That era, you guys, John and I were there, but you guys will never know. Anyway, they had 
equipment that said barbarian, barbarian. on it. I mean, Direct. they had, you know, this was like their domain. It was shoulder press. They had, it was like said barbarians on it. Did it? Because it was like their piece. Wow. The power rack barbarian. I mean, you know, you knew. Like, Who put it was that on there? Domain. Gold's Gym put that on there? Yes. It, 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 was, a, it, it was specially made equipment. It, it, was oh. way hev- it was way heavier made than everything else because it had yes. all the weight on it. So they, well, they own that squad. John, rack, they own that equipment. Rack. That was their company. No, rack? I don't think they owned it. It was Gold's oh, no. Gym equipment, oh. but it was almost like Gold's Gym showcasing, like you know, when the bar. But that's their thing, right there. Oh, you know, that's their. Which it was, was smart. It was. That was I, I can't explain it to you. There was a squat rack, a bench, a, 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 a seated shoulder press, and that was about it. There was only yes. four, three or four pieces yes. that were there, but they were they were big square tubes, eight big. inch steel. You know, and everyone heavy, probably wanted heavy. to use that, right? The power I mean, rack was they, like four they, by four. Iron. David used yeah, David used to do behind the head seated presses with like four hundred pounds for reps. Wow! Like Jimmy the Bull, they right. they had Jimmy the Bull. People here just think Jimmy the Bull some crazy guy that laughs and eats hot dogs, but they don't realize <laughs> I oh. knew Jimmy back in the early nineties. Dude, that fucking guy, I spotted him once on stage at the woman's extravaganza doing reverse benches with six hundred pounds. Reverse yeah. benches. Which, oh, it might have been over, it was over 600. And I told him, listen to me. There's a whole crowd like this out there, right? And they're all watching. And um, I mean, it, you know, and, and uh, what's his name? It's Kenny Kessel standing there with the microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, you, God rest his, in peace. You all know Kenny Kessel. Yeah. Anyway, so Jimmy's there. And I told Jimmy, bro, listen to me. Don't get stuck because I can't lift this off you. There's no, there's no fucking <laughs> And he's like, don't worry about it. <laughs> and he got up there and he's fucking pumping him out. Re- reverse. That's what the Barbarian Brothers In, in a tank top. top. In a tank that, top. Yeah. In a yeah. tank top. Yes. No, yes. no shirts shirt. on. No bench no shirts. Shirt. Dude, no. the Barbarian Brothers were known for cr- like those kind of lifts. Like yeah. dude, the bull could stand there with a one dumbbell and fucking put up like, you know, 200 pound dumbbell and f- fucking do like, you know, 20 reps with it over his head. One, you know, one arm and shit. That's the kind of shit they were. You know, they weren't dead. You know. Dead, deadlifting squat, like the standard stuff, they weren't as, as strong. I mean, bench, they were good, but, you know, they weren't known for their squat either. You know what I mean? That's why they used to wear jeans a lot because their legs weren't as big. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? But they, they, they did very few exercises. They, they, just did, they just did amazing amount of weight. Yes. Really? Yep. Yeah. Interesting. So they, you, were, if, they were low volume trainers, huh? <clears throat> they were yeah, what? Low, low volume trainers? I, yeah. I don't know what. What do you oh, call yeah. eight reps? What do you call eight reps of five hundred with a reverse grip? That... <laughs> no, but they would do. They would do a lot of reps with that. Shit. They would fucking. <laughs> you know, it's like Victor Richards. I always tell everybody you could talk about every one of these mass monsters. And by the way, I saw a film with uh, what's his name, Big Rammy, standing on stage, and he had. I could see on his uh. Right thigh, I could see where he shoots it because he had little, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'd have to show you that footage. Somebody yeah. took it as a great. I'm like, oh shit, nice injection marks there. But anyway, um, you could talk about these mass monsters today, the big Rammies, the guys coming out. In 1981, Victor Richards was a fucking monster. And I'm going to tell you something the arms on fuck and, and arms and structure on Rory Liedelmeyer, too, who's a good friend of mine. And by the way, I, he, you got to get him on the show. I here. got him. I got him booked I next know, week. He, he told me. Oh, he good. told me that you, you reached out to him or whatever. I, I just talked to him the other day. He is a good friend. I love him. I know. Dude, he had arms the size of bowling balls and deltoids the size of bowling balls. And these guys today... And that's what Liedelmeyer having a waist like this. You have no idea. <laughs> I know. He used to train John Arenita, Rudy Harmichello. Rudy Harmichello, for you guys that don't know who he is, won the fucking Teenage Mr. America. He was like 25. Sylvester Stallone put the fucking, the, 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 the fucking bowl on his head backwards that he won and shit. But um, he used to he train He won the Teenage America at 25, John. Did you hear what he said? Yeah, he was 25. He won the Rudy Teenage America at 25. Back in like 1980, Rudy Hermoschillo <laughs> won like the Teenage America or something like that. 25 years like, old. They said he was like 25 years old. You know, because how do you win the Teen America my, when you're 25 years old? Dude, my girlfriend's <laughs> my girlfriend's sister. Nobody knows how old she is. The mother doesn't remember what year she gave birth or the day yeah, or anything. Five years. So kind of oh, you think he lied about his age? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, who, you know who fits in that category too with the insane arms was. Remember Bill Pettis? Oh fuck yeah. Remember those oh, arms? Yeah. 
Yeah, but Bill, that black guy, fucking Jack, you know. He was this big. Meyer had that fucking Tiny structure. Waist. Yeah. Oh, Little Meyer had a beautiful body, bro. Beautiful. He's still pretty Matt big Mendenhall. from his pictures. Remember Matt Mendenhall? Matt, Matt Mendenhall should have been Mr. Olympia. Yep. But, but Little Meyer was pro. up there. What's that? He couldn't even turn pro, Matt he Mendenhall. He should have. I don't know. Somebody, I mean, Bob Paris beat him. I don't know. But Little Meyer was a fucking monster, bro. He, he was, was right in there in that crew. He's tall. Yeah, it was Little Meyer, Mendenhall. You know, all those guys were all competed together. Yep. The Little Meyer had this physique where he'd get out there and he just he would stand there and he'd almost have this like Francis Benfado shit going on, but bigger, taller, leaner. You know, he just looked so good. He was fucking. He's a good friend. I love him. We he walk in the gym and Victor Richards and he dude. Those guys were big back before all this insulin bullshit. All this fucking. You tell me, Dave. Who was bigger than Victor Richards today? None of these guys. No, I don't think anyone was. Yeah. No. There's nobody. Bet- his, his thighs, if you cut his thigh like this, it was as round as a 45 pound plate. It was you, unbelievable. You know, who was, you know who was as impressive as him and was in way better condition? Was Aaron was Baker. Oh, Aaron Baker. Well, he wasn't yes. as big as Aaron, Victor. But he wasn't his waist like this. But he and, wasn't and, and as big as Victor. Giant quads, and giant back, giant he quads, giant arms. They used to call him Aaron Arms, Aaron Arms Baker. But he had a white he, Batman. They called him Aaron Batman Baker. Well, that yeah, waist, that that was like this, and his back, his lats came out like freaking. But like, he was well, he Aaron dressed Arms like a Baker superhero first. in the gym too, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. He always had the Batman. Well, Belt. yeah, but that you know what? I, I think that came from Vince McMahon, though, because he he used to when he was younger, he was they used to call him Aaron Arms Baker, and then he became Batman. Because remember, that's what when he went over to the fucking WBF uh, shit. Yeah, and yeah. And then he, you know he he did the Batman thing over there, but I, I, he was great. No, you're right. He was a monster too, but not like Victor Richards was in his own stratosphere. But, yeah, but, but Vic never got in shape. Victor was. You're never- right. He was never ripped. You know why? Because he didn't have a guru. He didn't have Chad Nichols. No. He, he, but, uh, he liked to eat. All right, let me let me <laughs> give you three gu- let me give you three guys since you guys are the experts because you live there. Victor Richards, Jeep Swenson, Ooh. or uh, the Barbarian Brothers. Who was like more of a personality? Like like who was oh, more like on. when you saw him in person, your you, you, you jaw dropped? Jeep Swenson. <laughs> Jeep Swenson was a fucking monster. He was absolutely But he's monster also fucking... He was, Jesus Christ, how tall was he, though? Jesus, he was a fucking... Seven he, feet tall. Yeah, he was he a was wall. He was seven feet? He look, but he, he, he looked like he was seven I, I don't know if he was seven feet, but he, he was like... He was I don't 400 know, six, pounds, seven, six, I know. Eight, six, nine. Me- Bro, remember, him in, remember him driving his Jeep? He fucking filled up an entire Jeep. Oh, Dude, he kicked... Like, he looked the only man in America that looked too small in a Jeep. They made he a Jeep. Look, I mean, like they made a, a Jeep look too small. Is that Sorry. why they called him Jeep? He, he, <laughs> no, that was his name, I think. I, I don't know. know. Not. That could have been his real name, Greg. Everybody just called him Jeep. He, dude, he kicked Tom Platts like a football. Oh, oh with the, and the, and Cheryl too, right? Remember because she had Cheryl a black eye the next fight. day. Yes. But what happened? What? What? They cheated. They, they cheated. And what? And so Jeep beat the shit out of Tom Platts in the parking lot or in. Oh, because he cheated. Tom slept with his wife in the parking lot. And then, and then the next day, Cheryl comes to the gym with dark sunglasses on with his shit. Oh, really? So what happened? So Tom slept with Jeep's wife. No, no. Tom actually, Jeep's wife left him because you remember she, oh. she actually I think married Tom. Her right. name was Cheryl, whatever. Cheryl Swift, I think. Named and then Cheryl, she met yeah, Tom, girl. and then she became Tom. You know, Cheryl Platts for a while. Oh, wow. But uh, but dude, let me tell you something. Jeep Swenson, you'd see him walk in a gym, like the the floor, you know, like like fucking got like what's that movie? Fucking Jurassic Park, where you see the puddle <laughs> shaking like this, and you know T Rex is coming. Block, but per- block the light out of the doorway. The whole doorway would just get blocked out. He, but he must was, do you know, we could probably find a picture of him if, if Tyler like Google's Jeep Swenson. I know he played Bane in one of those old Batman movies, right? Yes. yes, like yes, Batman yes. Four or something like he that. He played Bane. Bane, but you also got to remember Victor Richards was a different, a different build than Jeep Swenson. Yeah. Jeep Swenson was built more like one of those strong men, kind of like a Brian Shaw he today. Was a or one of those. He was a wrestler. Huh? Yeah, he, he was, was a wrestler. wrestler. Yeah. I, he was a wrestler for a powerlifting wrestler. He was like a fucking strong man kind of guy. Right. But right. but but God damn it, 
fucking Victor Richards was swinging weights. You know, I, you know, I've told the stories a million times. There's a million of them. And then guys start getting Valentina and telling the same story. So I won't even get into it here. But, um, <laughs> it, you know, he was the fucking monster. It, it yeah. build wise. I mean, he, he, you just saw him. He, you ever see what you ever see what Victor Richards looked like at 16 years old? He was lifting like he was lifting weights. I I think on some island or some shit, and he was curling like fucking you know like coffee cans and all that shit. And he had a built. <laughs> yeah, a page can full of cement. Juice today. Michael, you guys know who Michael Zampano is. Michael Zampano wrote yes. the Underground Steroid Handbook with with Dan right. Shane. He owned Thank Champion you. Nutrition. Michael Zampano, I interviewed him once. I don't know if it was a radio interview or a TV interview on articles. I was with I can't you. Remember. We interviewed him together. Yeah. Remember, we talked he, about his test in Rosa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he told us, and I, I don't know if this is the same interview, John, but he told us that, because I've had him on multiple times, that Jeep Swenson was taking 50 to 100 Percocets a day. <laughs> and fucking he had such a tolerance to him. He was so big that... He was eating my candies, and that, he believes that that was part of what led to his death, his premature death. Dude, I know. Can you imagine Zampano. taking a hundred Percocets a day? That's nuts. <laughs> That's insane. That's insanity. <laughs> Nobody knows. Everybody thinks Dan Duchesne wrote that book. It, they wrote it together. Dumpano wrote it with Dan Duchesne. I'm sure Dumpano wrote the I whole thing. Mike Dan Z probably just Mike gave Zampano. him the information. Dave, Mike Zampano had an office upstairs in Gold's Gym. Upstairs, the uh, the upper upper uh, like third floor, second floor, whatever right. it was up there, uh, above where the office is, you know, and I used to go in that there and I would talk with him and shit because he would give guys like, like advice, you right. know, and Sunday he actually school. told me, what's that? Sunday school. He used to teach Sunday school. Uh, dude, it's funny because he knew that's, more. No, about that's what he called it. It was he had in the back of the gym. There was, and he would, on Sunday afternoon, he would ha have a gathering and answer all these questions about juice and how to take it and all. And that's where Dan got the idea. He said, "Hey, he, Dan saw that and he goes, let me buy you a cup of coffee.' And, and, and they and they, and, and they they manufactured the whole steroid handbook. Yes, the, Dan." They wrote the original one together. Dan the wrote original the one. By himself. Then Dan exactly. Duchesne took off with it. Yeah. But Zumpano started uh, uh, Unipro and all that shit, you know. Uh, and and uh, I, when I was talking to him, he actually told me, because when I was in Gold's Gym, that's where I really learned, you know, about steroids and how they work and everything. And he told me, don't go on them, you know, because I was like 21. He said, you got to wait till after 26, 27 years old. See, he actually pushed me not to do them. I, not that I was... I just asked him about it. Not, not that you ah, wanted you know, to listen. Huh? Not that you wanted to listen. No. No, I did listen. I didn't do him until I was 35. But the thing is. It, ruined, it didn't ruin his, his life. was going great until he took him, John. It's a good thing he waited. <laughs> well, not only did I take him, but I was selling him. That's what yeah. really fucked me up. You know what I mean? That's what really fucked me up. But no, Zumpano was a good guy. I liked. I used to like to. He knew about nutrition. See, Very smart. that's the one thing that guys don't realize. It wasn't forget the underground steroid handbook. It wasn't just about steroids. Duchesne didn't just know about steroids. He even wrote a book called The Ultimate Nutrition Handbook. Right. And it, Body how did, Opus. Right. Well, that one too. Yes. Hey, here's my question, well, I, though. Yeah. Back in the day, when you had guys like Victor Riches in the gym. And you had guys like the Barry Baron brothers, and you had guys like Jeep. So, how did no one worked? I noticed when I went to Venice Golds, so that no one worked. No one had a real job. How did these guys support themselves, John? Gay, well, gay shit. Yeah, no, there these was, guys, there, a lot of guys were bouncers. A lot of guys did private security. Um, there were, you know, there was always. There was always jobs coming into, you know, if people would come to the gym. They, some one woman wanted her husband's legs broken. She would you know, go to the gym <laughs> and go up to the counter and she'd say, you know, you know anybody here I could pay $500 to break my husband's legs? And and they'll say, well, you know, let me, see, let me put it out there and see if you know, anybody will answer. And guys would, you know. There were all kinds of jobs like that available. But bouncing was big, as, you know, stripping was big. And, gay and, for um, pay was gay like, for pay a lot was, of that posing. A lot of the po private the muscle worship. was big. But the most, of was huge. most of them hustled. Most of them had think, a hustle. John, let me ask you a question. Ar Arnold Schwarzenegger came here, right? Do you think, you know, they talk about that brick wall that him and fucking uh, uh, Franco built. That's one brick wall. Show me what else you did. You trained for years. You laid on the beach all day, and you made $1,000 for winning Olympia. How did you fucking feed yourself, pay for your apartment, and everything else? Yes, I know Joe Weider helped out and everything. 
But there's also other fucking shit that, uh, you know, people talk about from old school. You know what I mean? You know, they you know, all Ro did a little... Look, oh. Roger Collard told me that he was with... They, they used to go... That Arnold would take him to this... this guy's mansion this gay guy's mansion they got they'd all lay out by the pool and everything and they you know a bunch of them four or five guys you know roger and the, the guys that would all do those movies together yeah. and and they said arnold would disappear into the house with the guy for like an hour and come back with a big handful of money <laughs> is it john isn't I, that I don't think he was giving him investment advice but <laughs> i um, mean listen we just got demonetized by the way uh <laughs> <laughs> this video just got demonetized but Listen, I don't know. I can't say for sure that he did it, but the rumors, you know, I mean, we don't know what he did for money. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. And it's happened with all those guys back then because nobody wanted to work. They wanted to work. They were in the gym all fucking day. And John's <clears throat> right. There are a few that bounced at night, the Red Onion or whatever the fuck the name of that place was. There are a few guys. Flanagan. There are some guys that did private security for celebrities. Yep. You know that would have fucking guns and shit. I remember one guy showing me his trunk and fucking machine guns and shit. I'm just like, holy shit! Like Manuel Perry got into movies, but I think he was doing bodyguarding first. <laughs> yeah, uh, he was. I mean, you know, he and if you didn't Hulk, do that, he played it's... the Hulk's double. He paid Louis double. Oh, he did. Who did? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Manuel Perry's been in a gazillion Manny movies. Perry. I mean, nobody realizes he was, a, and he was a pretty good bodybuilder. But the other thing is. See, let me just, can I just, let me just say about the gay for pay thing. It wasn't like you, uh, you know, you go in there and you're banging some gay dude in the ass. They didn't do that. They'd stand there and they just poke. And right. a guy would fucking give them money and he would maybe do the fucking, you know, whatever. Shake hands with the general, release the hostages. You know what I mean? He would do whatever it is just to fuck, you know, and then he would give them money. So it wasn't like. These guys were They weren't doing gay stuff. Bit. They were just posing for gay guys is what you're saying. Right. Right. It was a posing thing. You know, now some went the extra mile, but I can't tell you who did what. You know what I'm saying? But even our old friend who passed away, I don't want to say his name, but he's our friend. You know yeah. what I mean? Who passed away. He was known to pose and shit. And there's videos online of him and his little skivvies and shit. You know? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, it's nothing wrong with that. You know, I one time fucking with, with my partner. I don't want to say his name. I almost threw it out there. Anyway, with a friend, he uh, he fucking, you know, called me up. Dude, you want to make some money? There's this gay dude in the city, you know. You, you know, he has a master, and he's, like, tied up to it. And I, you know, I, I told the story in Generation 9. So if I tell it here, everybody's going to be like, Valentina, I tell the same story over and over. <laughs> At least but, you um, remember you told the story already. Right? That, that's the important thing. <laughs> but, I mean, I, you know, I blew darts in his ass and shit. You know what I mean? It was, like, fucked up shit. But I got paid three hundred dollars. He wrote me a check. <laughs> he wrote you a check. Yeah, I was a famous art dealer. You, John, Christmas. you'll love this story. This is. I'll leave us at this story because John loves stories about my dad. So I go up to my friend's funeral two weeks ago, Cole Hansick, up in New York. I can't I'm, believe. It. Which is ter terrible. It was a very sad. Thing. I yeah. He used to fucking. He used to write to me after I, I met know, him. I know. I man. met him through you. Great. And kid. he used to write to me and and and. and Ask me crazy shit, and I knew... Uh, his dad his was poor, a dear friend of mine. His dad died too soon, too. But anyway, his, his dad's wife. brother, or his uncle, Rob, was, used to go over to my dad's house. And my dad taught um, in the same high school, Jamaica High School, as his grandfather. So there's a Vinnie Hansick Sr. who taught gym. My dad taught English. They used to carpool together. They were best friends, okay? So they used to hang out all the time. So... On the weekends, Vinny would go over to my dad's house, you know, drink wine and hang out and talk, and they would and he would bring Rob, his son. So, and that was Cole's uncle, Rob. So I, I see at the funeral, I see Rob, and we're talking about Cole and how terrible it was, and he's like, I gotta just tell you, I loved your dad. He's like, your dad would tell the greatest stories of all time. He goes, he'd have me laughing my ass off. He said, we'd be smoking weed. All I didn't even know this. We'd all be smoking weed. And your dad would ask me to get him bags of weed. I said, oh, really? He goes, yeah. I said, and, you know, he would pay me by check. I said, yeah, that sounds like my, something my dad would do. But he goes, it, it was worse than that. He said, he would write in the note section of the check, weed. And I'd be like, Sal, what are you doing? You know that? He's like, why? Why? It's, I'm, I'm, it's weed. I'm giving you money for weed, right? <laughs> Oh my God, that's too funny. Holy so, shit. I, 
I said, that's classic Sal Palumbo for, for that's, sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Why? What did I do wrong? Yeah, it's not weed I'm, I'm, I'm giving you money for? My thought, thought it was everything funny. was like legal. He didn't know anything was legal. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you God. know that your father smoked a babanya there? Or I, no? I know he smoked a little bit. I didn't know he was buying bags of weed from, 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 uh, from Ralph. <laughs> when, 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 when that in the house, when he had that studio downstairs, the library, the den. Yeah. I went down there with him. He was showing me something, and it was an ashtray on the bar. Yeah, it was full of roaches. Yeah, <laughs> I guess him and his friends would smoke weed. You know, but holy shit! It was funny That's because uh, he was like, "Yeah, but your dad told the greatest story." I said, "I know. I heard all the yeah. stories four thousand times." I oh, said, "But they were, they were good. If you never heard them, they were great stories." He, he told great stories, right? Because he would act them out too. Great storyteller. See, now, if he was on here, on this show, these fucking momos that watch this shit would be like, you told Sal, you told him, keep telling yeah, the yeah. same story. <laughs> you, know, and I'm, you know what I mean? Like, they do with me. If I say, God forbid, but mm-hmm. every time he tells stories, somebody new is listening, they're like, holy yeah. shit. You know what I mean? But, but Dave makes a very, very, very important point. It, you know that you're saying the sto- same story twice. Yeah. It becomes problematic when you think you're yes, saying it. Yes, but you don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Then you're going senile. Yeah, that means you're when demented. you're when you're on your tenth round and you think it's the first time, you're fucked up. <laughs> when he I, starts at, did I ever tell you the story? And Greg, you're like, yeah, many times. Yes. A what about times. when it changes? Each yeah. time it changes, it's it's got more shit to it. You know yeah. what I mean? The bottom line, the did moral of today's that? show is that we all we there's way too many people leaving us way too soon. I miss you, David, yeah. Paul. I miss all the people we talked about today who are no longer here. Greg, I want to uh, send out uh, a tremendous amount of healing energy to you because I know you got this operation coming up next week on your Ooh, throat. Hey. Best Thank of luck you. with that. And I know you're going to come out of it fine, and you'll be better than ever. And uh, you'll, I'm sure you'll have 10,000 stories to tell us from the operation. Oh, yeah, dude. I'm getting my lymph nodes, too, taken out. So I'll, like, I'll see you the following Tuesday. Ask him, Greg, I'll... when they're doing your lymph nodes, can you ask him if you could tighten up the skin a little bit here? Tell me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, really. See if you chop off a little on the nose, Tell him too. to pull a little of the skin back a little bit here, you know? <laughs> now, listen. Bring home as much as you can in a jar because we're going to want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> right. What's that religion can you... you can't remove take, shit from your body? pictures. I want you to... I want you taking pictures and video, as much, as much media as you can get from this, the, the better, all right? Yeah. And, and, and I want you to be a complete fucking pain in the ass, all right? <laughs> when they're putting he already you on is. and get it on film. It'll be gold. We, yeah, can you have your girlfriend something. at least videotape you when, you when they're putting you under anesthesia? Please, come on. I'll see, I'll see if I can. Yeah, because my phone's a flip phone, you know what I mean? And I can't. No, no, no. We have her do it. I'll have her, yeah, have her I'll do it. I'll ask you to do it, yeah. I, I tell you, I, I know there's some. YouTube I'm going to send you an people. iPhone. <laughs> yeah, we're going to send you the we're going to send you the phone. If I send you an it's iPhone, will you use it? I don't know. I, I, I have friends that are like are always. I want to buy you I, a gift. Please use. Just get an iPhone. I'll I'll pay for it. I don't know if I could do that. I don't what, know. What I, company I like do you use? Do you use AT and T? Come on, man. How how many times how many times does Greg Valentino have cancer surgery? <laughs> we, so we far got twice. To film this. We've yeah, so far this twice the, exactly. This is the second time in a month. You know how I feel? Because the first doctor didn't do it right, so I got to redo this whole fucking thing. If you had done it right and 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 ha- and like biopsied and realized it was cancer, right? You know, instead of telling me it was just papilloma virus. Right. For me in a dirty box or something, <laughs> I, I would fucking, you know, <laughs> you know, you, you know, you know, what's great about this. If, if, if you had to have cancer, at least at least, you know, the, the freaking momos are getting driven crazy that they, they weren't right, that it was going to be your, your muscle, your bone. Right. Are you going to get some kind of oh, systemic yeah. disease? Can't from He's all having the oil that synthol yeah. taken out of his arm. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> they're, they're, they're he's having it was only his degenerate <laughs> lifestyle that, that that got him the cancer. It wasn't the the the, the, the uh, injecting his arms. That Exa- did it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> they're, they're, they're cringing over that fact. That's if that shows you fucking momos out there, you haters. That maybe if you ate pussy, you could get cancer too. <laughs> you and Michael Douglas, <laughs> man, right? 
and stop watching muscle videos and jerking off. And maybe it's the fucking, you know, maybe your throat could get a little fucking, you know, you know. But, uh, Everyone send Greg their, 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 their well wishes. Send him a lot of Thank prayers you. because we want to see you get through this, Greg. And hopefully you only miss one week of shows. Right. Uh, next Tuesday, I'll be being operated on. I yeah. get operated at St. Pat's next Tuesday. But the following Tuesday, I'll be back. All Hopefully, right. Ben is on the next. And the following Tuesday after that, we'll all be quarantined, so it won't matter anymore. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's the end. We're out of time. I got to do another under. show. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, John. Thank you, Thank you everyone out there. And I want to send my uh, healing energy and prayers out to Peter, Paul, uh, for the loss yeah. of his uh, twin brother and to their whole Paul family. Uh, I'm Dave Palumbo. For Tyler Shore, our producer, John Romano and Greg Valentino, we'll see you next week.